Hey, what's up everyone? Today we're going to be trying out Pixelmator Photo for the iPad. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to download this here. I've never used it before. So we're going to try it here together and see how it works. And this comes as a suggestion from the comments. You know, I've talked a lot about Darkroom in the past and taught courses on Darkroom as kind of my primary raw photo editor on the iPad. And you know, I've had some qualms about that since they've switched to a subscription model that kind of goes against what we really want to have going on and Pixelmator Photo has been suggested as an alternative. So we're downloading it here and we're going to try it out. The Pixelmator apps have been around for a long time on Mac products and I've known about them but I've never used any of them and so Pixelmator Pro I believe is the one that's more like Photoshop and Pixelmator Photo is more of a raw editor like Lightroom or like Darkroom, On One Photo, those kind of editors. It's supposed to be more like that so we're going to try it out. Um, I had never tried it out because I didn't think it could do batch processing, but someone told me in the comments that batch processing has been added recently. So we're going to check that out because I really need batch processing in order to make it work. And this is spurred by Darkroom not working super well the last few days for editing raw photos from this new camera I've got. So I've got this A6000 here that I'm using now to shoot photos and it shoots 24 megapixel raw photos and it's just not handling those very well. So we're going to see if Pixelmator Photo can handle those any better and has enough capabilities. The other benefit, as you saw there on the screen, is that this is only a $4.99 app. So Darkroom used to cost $10 to unlock everything, although you can use some features for free. And now Darkroom wants to be a subscription model or charge you $50 to unlock everything, which it's not really unreasonable. Like I've said before, it's $50 is fine for a professional level app. But if you could get this for $4.99 and maybe it can do everything that you need, that would be even better. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at this. Okay, so I've had a couple of times trying to film this and the iPad keeps losing the video. Um, so I don't know that I'm going to be able to show the screen recording to you guys, but we're going to try this one more time and see what happens. Basically, the first time I tried using Pixelmator Photo, it didn't go very well. I had some real concerns about it and it just wasn't working the way that I wanted it to. It wasn't letting me do any kind of batch edits and I was thinking that it was going to not be able to edit non-destructively because it was asking to modify the photos on the hard drive. But I've now found out from looking through the menus and stuff that it can edit non-destructively and I've gone through and I've edited a couple photos. It's got all of the tools that I would need to be able to edit photos. So it's very comparable to something like Lightroom or Darkroom in the terms of the tool set that it has. It even has a few more tool sets than Darkroom does. Not as many tool sets as Lightroom does. So it's kind of right there in the middle. And so we're going to go ahead and we're going to try and look at this a little bit more and show you guys some of the things that are there so that you can decide if this is gonna be a, the type of app for you. I might do some more videos on it later on, but hopefully I can at least get this video out to you guys if you know everything will cooperate with me. This is just one of the struggles of having a more lower end iPad. They can do a lot of things and I use them for a lot of things, but sometimes they don't handle the workflow as well. So trying to show Pixelmator workflow and record the screen at the same time is just a little bit more than it seems to be able to handle, but we'll see what we can do here. Okay, so let's see what we can look at here. So you see, I've got these photos with the little chains on them. These are being identified as raw photos and you can see these other photos are not raw photos. They don't show raw at the top, but the chains mean that I've edited them and that those are linked up as non-destructive edits. If you wanna to change to a destructive workflow, you can tap these three dots and you can change your workflow to destructive. That will save you space, which makes sense, but I would not recommend doing that because non-destructive workflow is best. So we've made some edits. So let me go ahead and just show you. If I click on this photo, if I go into edit, we'll load it up. And if I hold on the photo, you can see what it looked like before. You can see what it looks like after. And so there's this machine learning button, which will do some automatic stuff to it. There's this healing brush, which is kind of interesting, but not like the greatest healing brush in the world. Let's go try and remove one of these people from the beach or this parasail. Whoops. Did not mean to do that. We'll undo that. Remove this parasail. 
and you can't really see it so that's good we've done some where you could pretty much see where the brush was so it's not the most sophisticated healing tool but it's better than dark room which has nothing and probably about as good as light room so that's fine i can undo that and so then there's a crop tool which does basically all the crop things you would expect it does have an intelligent crop this machine learning crop down in the bottom but i'm not really sure what an intelligent crop does and then there's some rotate options crop straightener perspective tools and some different aspect ratio options then we have our tools here you can adjust your temperature which i have you can see i've made adjustments to all of these things and those are basically the tools that you would expect in a professional level editing app do your color adjustments the way you get these is to turn them on and then you can also turn them off so you can see when they're off, it make changes. I wish you could collapse them, but you can't. So even once you've made changes, you have to leave them on if you want to be able to see them. One of the nice things is you've got this slider down here that adjusts the opacity of all the adjustments that you've applied. So it's kind of like using it as a filter. So you've got all of those that you can use and they work just like you'd expect. So now let's talk about copying adjustments in batch editing because that's the big one here this is not perfect but you can copy all of your adjustments by going to the three dot menu and this is where you choose copy adjustments and then when you leave here click done it's going to tell you you're going to modify it this is where i got worried the first time but you just click modify and you can come back and you can make changes to that and then if you want to paste those so i want to go to this one you have to go into edit it will load up and you come here and you choose paste adjustments and it will apply those and then of course you can make further adjustments to it i think i'm just going to lower that and then you can click done here then it's going to ask you if you want to modify it so the workflow there is a little bit clunky because you just have to go into each photo paste it and i thought there would be batch editing options and there are but they don't quite work the way that you might expect them to coming from another application. You can't just take those edits that you made and batch them. If we click on select, we can choose some of these that we want to adjust. And then if we choose batch, there isn't an option to paste those adjustments. So those adjustments we copied, we can't paste. We can only use presets that are already in here. Um, there is the option to create your own custom, so that might be something that I need to look into further. But for right now, it looks like it's going into each photo, pasting it on, then exiting the photo. So it's a little clunky. It's not as good as Lightroom on the desktop or Darkroom in terms of that workflow. So I don't like that as well. Maybe there's more that I need to learn about it. If you know more, go ahead and put it in the comments. I know that batch editing is really a new feature. So that's why we're looking at this app is because it's added that fairly recently. And so we'll need to probably learn more about it and hopefully that will be refined as this app goes along and gets better and better as a batch editor. But that's the basics, I think, of Pixelmator Photo. So it's a pretty good app for $4.99. It's a great app for $4.99, especially if you think that you would have to spend $50 to unlock all of the features inside of Darkroom or pay $10 a month for all of the features inside of Lightroom. $4.99 for the app is really a great price. And so I would say if you're looking for a raw editor and you don't feel like the Lightroom path is right for you, you don't need all of the Adobe cloud storage, you don't need Photoshop, then definitely look at this one. It's not a subscription. And Darkroom going to the subscription or the $50 one-time purchase price tag, it's not bad. It's not nearly as good as when it was $10, but this one's only five. And so definitely this looks like an app that's worth looking into for mobile photographers, for editing on the go. I will keep looking into it. I'll probably do some more videos about how to use it as I learn better how to do it. Um, let me know in the comments if you're interested in specific videos in Pixelmator Photo or if you'd like there to be a course on Skillshare for that. So we're going to go ahead and end the video here. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.